welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 13 for February the 26th, 2017. We're still in Unit 3 entitled The Birthing of a New Community. Our topic for today is taken from the Adult Quarterly, Fruitful Living. Fruitful Living. The devotional reading is taken from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. Our background scripture is taken from uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 18, and chapter 6, verse 10. Uh, we will be studying today uh, from two chapters uh, Galatians chapter 5, verses 18 through 26, and Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Our key verse reads, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. That's taken from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 from the NIV translation. <clears throat> Our lesson aims today, number one, is to define the characteristics that Paul listed as the fruit of the Spirit. Number two, sense the needs of others in the church. And the third aim is to work by the Spirit's empowerment for the good of all, especially for those of the family of faith. We have three outlines today that we will be uh, focusing on. Uh, the first outline is entitled Walk Right. Uh, the second outline is entitled Love Right. And the third outline is entitled Give Right. I certainly thank and praise God for this great opportunity to be able to share this lesson with you as we close out Unit 3 uh, from the book of Galatians. We hope that you have had opportunity to read along with us and study from this uh, this book. Uh, the Apostle Paul uh, is addressing many issues uh, with the Galatians. Um, we want to note that uh, when we began talking about this church uh, there was a lot of discussion about uh, circumcision uh, that these uh, converts needed to be circumcised in order to be saved but we want to keep in mind that uh, this church had many problems uh, facing it and one of uh, the biggest ones is that they had defected uh, from the gospel of grace um, and they had gone backward uh, to legalism to Judaism um, trying to justify themselves before God uh, by the keeping of the law. I want to read a little bit of this biblical context because we have quite a bit to cover today so we're going to try to get to that. Uh, this is from uh, our lesson quarterly. Paul had just completed his admonition to the Galatians concerning their freedom in Christ. He instructed them to use their freedom in Christ to serve others with a sincere and unconditional love. This is to be the height of our love and service to one another. We cannot live our lives in isolation. God has always intended for us to live together in community, supporting one another and loving one another. While writing this, Paul was aware of the struggle that freedom can and will bring. Christian freedom requires us to make choices. There is always a choice to serve either the will of God or to serve self. Paul was very much aware of the Galatians need for power that the law could not give. It is because of this need and the incompleteness of the law that we stand in need of love. It is this love, the love of God, that will fill us and prepare us for a worthy walk with and for God. And then just a little bit to highlight about this freedom uh, from our lesson standard, uh, freedom can be dangerous. Uh, the question is, can we trust ourselves to do what is right 
if we are free from law or threat? That's the fundamental question Paul addressed as today's lesson picks up where um, the text of last week's lesson concluded. We also want to keep in mind that the theme of the book of Galatians is uh, maintaining our freedom in Christ. And so we hope that uh, we will go back and read uh, these two chapters, uh, Galatians 5 and 6, uh, so we can get some perspective. I want to start uh, with this first outline. Uh, it's entitled, Walk Right. This is taken from Galatians chapter 5, uh, verses 18 through 25. But I want to go up to uh, verse 16. And it begins, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things uh, that you wish. And then in our lesson uh, text today, as it picks up at verse 18, and I think I want to read this from the King James Version. Uh, verse 18 says, But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, um, verse 20, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit of the kingdom of God. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, uh, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Verse 24, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. And if ye live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Very plain language here, very practical application. Uh, Paul is moving through uh, his discussion um, on what the fruit of the spirit is all about and, and some of the uh, uh, the fruit, if you will, of of the flesh. And and all of these things that, that, that Paul is uh, sharing with these uh, Galatians, you know, it's very important that we understand uh, the purpose of the law was to highlight all of these things for us uh, under the category of sin. And so uh, the problem is, uh, as we try to justify ourselves according to the flesh, you can imagine if, if an individual got one of these issues straight in his life, but uh, not the others, uh, but the the problem with the law, if you will, is that when you break one law, you have broken the whole law. So uh, one of the things that I uh, found interesting uh, in studying these two chapters, uh, I was looking at the hopelessness of keeping the law. Uh, back over in the fifth chapter of the book of Galatians, verse 1, and I want to read that. Uh, the Bible says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And that's very important. We have a responsibility uh, to not be entangled uh, with things or with yokes uh, that uh, uh, keep us bound and, and, and we have to understand that uh, there is no way for us to keep ourselves uh, I don't care how morally uh, uh, correct and accurate you are uh, but the, 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 uh, the grace of God has been preached to us as it was to the church of Galatia and they originally had accepted it 
uh, that they were going to live by the Spirit, uh, and conduct themselves in, 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 in concert with the Holy Spirit's leading and guiding, but, uh, but uh, without the Holy Spirit, uh, even as John tells us in the 15th chapter, uh, Christ says, apart from me, ye can do nothing. So we want to have some perspective about this, and I don't want us to get uh, 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 thrown off guard about some of these things that may be some issues in our lives, uh, even as Christians. But one of the things that we have to do is allow the Holy Spirit to assume and take control of the situation, and you will find yourself uh, uh, keeping uh, the requirements of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, not of some work that you can perform. Uh, but as we said earlier, the original uh, issue in the church um, was circumcision, which which tells us that uh, if these individuals had circumcised themselves, uh, that would have been some credit given to them that they would have had uh, circumcision in their flesh to their credit as though they had done something uh, to justify themselves before God and so it really doesn't matter what we are trying to do whether it is circumcision or some other sacrifice or some other type of thing that we are trying to work it out in our own flesh or in our own strength or in our own ability uh, will fall short of the mark and so this is what Paul is is helping uh, uh, these Galatians to understand but some of this commentary helps us to appreciate this lesson uh, and I want to read a little bit our lesson starts out in verse 18 with Paul contrasting the previous statement in verse 17 that was last week's lesson Paul gave us the answer to overcoming the battle between the flesh and the spirit the free power of the spirit would give believers power uh, over the flesh just as it gives us power over the law now let me just say this here uh, over in Psalm 19 uh, and I believe we had covered this before uh, there's nothing wrong with the law uh, uh, so we don't want to uh, uh, throw the law out because Jesus did not he did not come to destroy the law but we want to understand some things about the law uh, that help us appreciate the fact that we uh, and even the Jews, the children of Israel, they were not able to keep the commandments of God. They were not able to to uh, fully keep all of God's commandments, so they had to continuously uh, offer sacrifices for their sins. But uh, but but the law, uh, uh, as the Book of Galatians helped us understand, it was it was our tutor. It taught us uh, until Christ came. It instructed us. Uh, and it should have led us to Christ uh, demonstrating and, and revealing to us that we were not able to keep the law in its entirety and so uh, what we have to do now is this uh, outline is explaining to us if you have been filled with the Holy Spirit just allow him to take control and then we find ourselves not gratifying uh, the, lust, the lust of the flesh as, as uh, outlined in some of these verses we can live better we can do better with the power of God but apart from the Holy Spirit uh, we will fall short so the law can lead a person to Christ exposing, exposing the sinful nature we have that's in Galatians chapter 3 verse 24 after this acknowledgement and confession our need for Christ uh, the Holy Spirit assumes control uh, and guides us to God and a full life with Him. This fullness is inevitable unless we grieve the Holy Spirit by allowing sin to enter uh, in. And I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 4 uh, verse 30. But in verses 19 through 21, Paul lists uh, such sins as the works of the flesh. The works are more than workings. Uh, they are the actual accomplishments or outcomes of sin and the flesh. And so these are things that we can recognize in our lives that uh, uh, if we are practicing these things, uh, even as a saved individual, we must understand that we must allow the Holy Spirit to take control. Otherwise, we will continue uh, 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 to practice those things. 
Uh, I remember some years ago uh, they had a saying in the church uh, I, people would say well you know I did those things because I couldn't help myself well that's not an excuse so uh, if you have been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit that's what he's there for is to help us uh, with temptations to help us in these trials that that come against us that wage war against our minds and and ultimately in our hearts and then to our members uh, of our bodies and so uh, this background scripture that gave us Romans chapter 6 verses 1 through 11 but I want you to read all of that sixth chapter and it will help you understand more about the members of your body and what they are for and they are not uh, for our self gratification but we ought to glorify God even in our mortal bodies so I hope we understand uh, what Paul is trying to do and, and he, Paul goes on to say that uh, those who belong to Christ not only exhibit the fruit of the spirit but also have the reality uh, crucified the flesh with its passions and desires Paul closed this section of, of his admonition by suggesting that since we live by the spirit the believers are to keep in step with the Holy Spirit so we don't want to be lagging behind in terms of interpretation in terms of holiness in terms of uh, of repentance in terms of uh, uh, just living uh, righteously uh, before God uh, that word sanctification came up in the study of our lesson and what that means to us as believers that we have been set apart uh, for the purposes of God and so uh, we are able then to live holy as God requires all of us uh, to do so. So we must keep in step um, with the Holy Spirit. And what the Holy Spirit will do, he will guide your life in accordance with the word of God. If you read John chapter 16, the Holy Spirit, he doesn't uh, speak on his own initiative. Whatever he hears, those things he reveals. And so uh, uh, through the Holy Spirit, he reveals things that uh, Christ has taught us and he reveals the word of God to us. And, and we ought to line up with that. Uh, you don't have to say something told me. Just put the name on it. it. Either the devil is talking to you or the spirit of God is talking to you. And so this is what the Holy Spirit comes to do. And he remains uh, according to John chapter 14 he remains with us uh, and so as we face these temptations uh, uh, understand that it is not God who is tempting you to live contrary to uh, the word of God and I want you to read James chapter 1 uh, verse 13 we won't have time to go over there today but uh, we want to appreciate the fact that uh, God is not tempting us to sin when you read that passage in James chapter 1 he will tell you uh, who the culprit is uh, in this temptation so the question is asked in the quarterly identify obstacles that hinder you from a holy walk with God what can you do to bring them into submission with the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit so as we said earlier there's nothing you can do or I can do in and of ourselves but we have to rely on the Spirit of God through the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit himself to help us and uh, and when you see all of these obstacles that prevent us from living in accordance with the will of God we have to pray there's no way around that this is something we do uh, constantly uh, daily we have to pray for ourselves and we have to pray about ourselves you know when you're struggling uh, in some of these areas that we read earlier in your flesh uh, when I see these things uh, 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 in my in my life uh, uh, all your past always 
uh, uh, is there with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, your unregenerate uh, nature walks alongside your regenerate nature and what your old self or your old nature wants to do is take uh, uh, seek an opportunity to to take over where the Lord have brought you from and this is what we read earlier that the the flesh and the spirit are in opposition to one another uh, one another the Holy Spirit is wanting to help you live according to the will of God and your flesh is 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 raising up to have its way and to 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 get you back into the things that God has delivered you from and so what what do we do uh, in a battle like that uh, I want you to read Romans chapter 7 all of it when you have some time but we have to begin to go in prayer and ask the Lord to help us uh, uh, it's nothing new that the believers struggle and that we have issues but what do we do about these things to maintain our liberty and our freedom in Christ we don't want to use the freedom and the liberty that God has given to us through Jesus Christ as an opportunity to sin. Uh, the Bible does not give us license to sin. The Bible presents choices to us. The Bible presents the will of God to us. And we have to learn how to live this life according to the dictation of the Holy Spirit and also the power of the Holy Spirit. So we want to keep those things in mind. Our second outline is entitled uh, Love Right. This is taken from Galatians chapter 5 verse 26. And then it moves to uh, Galatians chapter 6 verses 1 through 5. And I want to read this uh, from the NIV translation. Verse 26 says, Let us not become conceited, uh, provoking and envying each other. And then we move to Galatians chapter 6 beginning at verse 1. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Verse 2. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something uh, when they are not, they deceive themselves. Verse 4. Each one should test their own actions. Uh, then they can take pride in themselves alone, without comparing themselves to someone else. Uh, verse 5, for each one should carry uh, their own load. So what is Paul saying here? Uh, Paul told the Galatians that since they had all the freedom and choice and could walk with God with purpose and strength, they should not become arrogant or conceited in what they had. And we have to be careful with that. Uh, there are some super Christians running around who believe that they cannot be affected by anything but but we have to be mindful that that uh, 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 Genesis chapter 3 tells us about Satan that the he is uh, more crafty than any created thing so we want to be careful and mindful uh, if you want to make your boast make your boast in the Lord uh, to God be the glory you know those types of terms that that take the uh, uh, sort of credit from us and we put the glory and give the glory to God who is the only one uh, uh, as Jude says in his uh, uh, epistle uh, to keep us from falling and so we don't want to be arrogant and conceited and then uh, uh, provoking each other uh, uh, we shouldn't do that uh, such arrogance can rekindle strife in the body so in addition to living right we should love right so Paul then further expounded on what he had said in Galatians uh, 6 chapter 6 verse 1 by using the term someone Paul was alluding to the fact that it is easy for this to happen to anyone in essence, Paul was reminding his readers that in this world uh, we can be overtaken by sin in a matter that seems to happen uh, suddenly. You know, that happens uh, to us. Satan can uh, subtly deceive us. Uh, before we can bat our eyes, we've gone in the wrong direction. So uh, uh, we are not all that. 
uh, as it was, but as it were. But uh, we want to make sure we understand and keep this thing in perspective. You know, this is a day by day type of thing. Uh, God keeps us, and 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 then when someone, uh, one of our brothers and sisters, and and this is what it's talking about uh, 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 in Galatians chapter six, verse one. This distinction, Paul. Uh, makes here is noteworthy brothers and sisters that's what we are any of us uh, can be caught uh, in a situation but it tells us the remedy uh, for this this situation when one of us is caught in sin and one of these things that we read about earlier uh, the these works of the flesh uh, he said we should restore that person uh, that person can uh, ask, repent, and ask God for forgiveness. And the first epistle of John, chapter 1, tells us that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. So, uh, we, uh, But I like what it says here. He says, uh, we ought to watch ourselves, or you also may be tempted. You know, when we talk about how somebody else has fallen, one of our brothers and sisters, that could easily be you could easily be me uh, uh, so we, we, we have to uh, uh, understand that it is the Lord that is keeping us and so uh, we are not to look down on one another because one of our brothers and sisters uh, have fallen or have been overtaken so a sinning saint needs restoration as well as divine forgiveness well we shared that earlier such persons also need care and working with them toward full restoration. We have such a job to do uh, in loving one another to make sure that uh, uh, our brothers and sisters reach a, a place. This is what I believe Ephesians chapter 3 uh, tells us our role is in the church. Is to help our brothers and sisters until everyone reaches a state of maturity of of somebody that's that's full grown in Christ, if you will, uh, not an arrogant adult, but somebody that's not wavering, uh, 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 and that's a work in and of itself to make sure that everybody, all of our brothers and sisters, all of our uh, 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 church body members, and, and, and so we have to make sure through our instruction that nobody's lagging behind, that we are uh, giving proper nurture to all of the saints, so everybody is uh, is up to speed, if you will, and 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 none of our brothers and sisters are are being tossed to and fro and being tricked and being deceived, just like these uh, uh, Galatians were uh, in this text today. Paul had preached the gospel of grace to them, and and there were some Judaizers, some experts if you will in the law who came behind that message and, and and they were very good in the law they were very persuasive in the law and they began to uh, share their views with the church at Galatia and it turned them so uh, we have to be careful uh, about these things and sometimes uh, it, it it's 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 a doctrinal issue with us that we fall uh, in, in addition to some issue in our flesh so we, we have to be mindful uh, of these things today that we all need prayer and we need to pray for one another uh, uh, that God will uh, have mercy upon us and help us uh, through these trials and tribulations so a true sense of, of helpfulness stretches across uh, in other matters as well in fact if we are engaged in other people's lives as Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 states we may establish systems of prevention by not allowing temptation uh, to enter this is how we uh, you know when we pray for one another or we check on one another um, when you call people do you just want to know uh, uh, about their physical well-being or do you have you ever checked on someone's faith uh, did you ever call anybody to check on their faith to see where they were in their faith and their belief uh, were they still holding on to God's unchanging hand you know this is what Paul is doing here uh, through these letters uh, if he could not physically check on these churches that he had established in these new converts 
he, he sent someone to check on them and we have to do that uh, he's not just checking on their physical well-being this is a spiritual matter uh, that we are looking at that they had defected from the gospel of grace uh, and they turned back to the keeping of the mosaic law and its system uh, uh, systems if you will to try to justify themselves so their faith had been upset uh, their faith had been compromised and so Paul is writing out of concern. Uh, they had been bewitched. Uh, they had been tricked. They had been fooled. They had been deceived. Somebody had led them astray. And Paul is concerned. He says, what happened to you? And so when we see people that have defected and wandered away from the faith, it is our responsibility, it is our love responsibility to check on their faith and see why our brothers and sisters have drifted away. Uh, that's a very dangerous thing as we learned in this lesson. Isolation is not good uh, for the believer. It was not God's intent for us to be isolated from one another. We are brothers and sisters in Christ and what affects one affects us all. We need to keep that in mind. But the question is asked here in the quarterly, share your reactions to those caught in sin. Did you handle them correctly? How could you have handled things differently? Perhaps in a more Christ-like way? So were you critical of the individual? Uh, did you temper your comments with mercy, uh, with empathy, with uh, justice? Uh, God is concerned with equity. God is concerned with mercy and grace. Uh, when you ask the Lord to have mercy on you, a synonym for that word is pity. You're asking God to pity your circumstance, pity the situation. And so it is very troubling for us not to uh, love one another in a way uh, uh, that uh, causes our believers our brothers and sisters in Christ to to come back uh, we don't want to browbeat them but we want to handle them in such a way doctrinally not just some opinion that we have but the gospel has many passages that uh, that have uh, 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 restoration properties if you will uh, Psalm 51 is a very good one we remember that very well uh, David said, Lord, have mercy upon me according to your loving kindness. And we, use, we have to do that uh, when people have been caught uh, and have fallen um, into any type of uh, situation. We can handle things in a way uh, that cause them to come back in a Christ-like manner. Keep in mind, that's what Jesus did for us. He bore our sins. Uh, Isaiah 53 is a very good passage to read. Uh, uh, he took on all of our sinfulness. Uh, he shed his own blood uh, for our sins. He was crucified. He was publicly crucified for not, not his sins, but our sins. And how dare we not forgive and restore such a one? Jesus, even on the cross, said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So we just have to keep these things in mind. And then our last outline is entitled Give Right. This is taken from Galatians chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. Again from the NIV translation. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Verse 8. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to, uh, to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. In verse 10, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong 
to the family of believers. You know, I was thinking about these Judaizers uh, who came to these Galatians and began to tell them things that were not true. Where was the love in that? Um, they wanted to take credit for their instruction, um, uh, their instruction of error. Uh, they wanted these Galatians to follow them. To what end? They wanted to glory in these individuals that they had somehow impacted their lives. But we have some practical instruction here uh, in this section. Uh, the thought returns to bearing one another's burdens. This time the focus is on the specific area of giving for the support of Christian work. Uh, in verse 6 the charge is for the recipient of the teaching to share all good things with the one who was doing the teaching. The idea of communication carries the thought of participating in something along with someone else by sharing all good things with the one teaching. The believer participates in the act of spreading the message of Christ. Let me just say this to you about giving because I know there's a lot of discussion about it, but uh, giving has many uh, parts to it if you will and one of the things that we do in our giving uh, particularly to our local churches and to various organizations who are noteworthy and, and, and helping to further the gospel it takes resources to do this and we need to understand that so uh, we we want to be able to make sure that the gospel gets to the people uh, and to the places where it needs to go it takes resources, money to travel. It takes resources to get people from uh, one place to another. Uh, we're not paying for the gospel, uh, if you will, but we are making sure that the individuals who are sharing it and who are spreading it can continue to do the work uh, uh, of ministry. And that's what it is is all about. Uh, you should read the 30... 30 epistle of John um, uh, which deals uh, uh, with this issue of itinerant ministry or ministers if you will people who have to go from place to place and so we want to be able to keep this in mind uh, about our giving we want to make sure that, that, that we put the resources in place that keep the gospel spreading this is what Paul is doing in sharing today. Paul warned us to beware of snubbing our nose at the divine plan of God because no one can successfully continue to turn away from God for his universal principle of sowing and reaping is operational. Spending resources to satisfy one's own personal desires will lead to destruction for the flesh will soon decay and rot away. By contrast, sowing to the spiritual aspects of life wherein we are now walking will reap eternal benefits. These eternal benefits have a way of arriving right on time. It is important that we do not become weary in well-doing. We will reap the results of our efforts if we do not faint. So the Bible is not telling you that you can't do, it, do things for yourself. I think we understand that we want to take the right approach to this lesson, but we want to make sure that our desires uh, are in place and that they are prioritized is the word that we want to uh, assert here uh, so we can understand that uh, God takes priority uh, over uh, the things that we would want to do for ourselves. Uh, keep that in mind as we talked about uh, this circumcision uh, uh, if individuals wanted to do that to justify themselves what else will they do uh, in their flesh to make sure that they are on point uh, if you will or justified before God so we have a tendency to uh, to get off course uh, when it comes to ourselves as opposed to the affairs of God uh, we should not forsake uh, the, the assembly uh, 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 of believers uh, uh, so we should not be in isolation or 
selfish in our attempt. Uh, if you have some time, you could read uh, Philippians chapter 2. Uh, Paul says over there concerning Jesus, don't do anything with selfish ambition. Don't do anything with selfish motives. Uh, and then he gives us the characteristics of Christ, how he humbled himself even to the point of death. But going on, our lesson closes with an emphatic admonition for us to do good, with an added plug to make sure that we take care of others in the faith. The consideration to acknowledge those of the household of faith comes not to highlight preference, but to be a bridge builder on two fronts. Number one, it helps to keep division from brewing among the brethren, as such was the case in Galatia. And number two, it allows outsiders to see unified love that uh, may allow them, because of their respect for our unity and love, to draw closer and hear the gospel message uh, with more clarity and be able to connect Christ's love to living examples. Very powerful instruction there. So if we're not, uh, 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 they used to teach us this years ago, but charity begins at home. Uh, and then it spreads abroad. Uh, if we don't love our brothers and sisters uh, uh, that are members of, of the body of Christ, how are we going to love strangers? Uh, if we bite and devour and uh, tear each other down, how are we going to be better with someone who doesn't uh, uh, know Christ in the part of their sins? And the thing is, is that we send the wrong message uh, to the unsaved. Uh, we send the wrong message that we don't care about one another. So in like fashion, the outsiders don't want to be a part of what we are uh, about because it's hypocritical to them. So that's what we want to take away from this. We ought to do good to those, especially of the household of faith. We ought to have such a bond of love between us that is it's magnetic, that it draws individuals to, to be a part of that. Uh, and so Paul is really stressing these points here, practical application. But it goes on to say here, the question is asked, consider your tithes, pledges, and gift giving. Are we sowing out of a giving heart filled with love or a grudging heart filled with lust? How can we make the adjustment to love giving? That's a very important question. You and I have to answer these questions. Uh, and we have to allow God to help us in our hearts and in our minds that we'll do the things that are pleasing in His sight. And we'll give, not grudgingly, but we are, are proud and we're thankful that we're being a part of something uh, that is bigger than ourselves. And we do that to continue uh, the promotion of the gospel and to love our brothers and sisters. These are uh, uh, not goals that, that we cannot attain. We simply must ask the Lord to help us get there. And I believe that he will. And one of the passages as we close that I will share with you. And I, I was looking at this lesson. I couldn't help but see myself and what the Lord had done for me and what he continues to do. And, and I remember uh, where the Lord had brought me from and what he's doing in my life. And it encourages me from Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. He that began a good work in you shall perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. So as believers, we are a work in progress. God has taken you on, has taken me on as sinners, and he has saved us, and he has started a miraculous work in our lives. He is shaping us and, and making us and, and molding us and rearranging us to look like Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful about that. The process has already begun. And because God has undertaken it, he will bring us to completion. Mature Christians in Christ. I hope, trust, and pray that we have given you something to think about today. I, I have enjoyed studying uh, the book of Galatians. I hope that you will go back and read uh, these passages of scripture and and understand this, that the church has always been plagued with problems. It always has. But thank God, he has raised up individuals, even the Apostle Paul, to write 
and to encourage and to instruct. And that's what our leaders present to us today. We have some good uh, uh, spirit-filled, uh, God-loving leaders who are laboring among us every day, every week, every year with their own personal struggles, but they're laboring uh, in this gospel to deliver a message to us today and I just hope that we can appreciate them and that we can love them and that we can stand with them and those that we see that have fallen uh, are short and are not living up to what they should do pray for them pray for them all of us like sheep have gone astray pray for your leaders pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ if you know somebody any believer that's struggling in sin, pray for them. Ask God to have mercy upon them. Do your job and encourage them and love them, and God will be pleased. So until such time that we will, the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.